The end of June brings NASCAR to its first ever doubleheader weekend. Two races in two days at Pocono Raceway. It's here that a pair of drivers solidify themselves as the championship favorites. Harvick looking to win here for the first time ever. Yeah, boys! What a job! Kevin Harvick would win one day at Pocono. 24 hours later, Danny Hamlin comes back and wins the second day. I'm kicking ass. Way to go, man. Danny Hamlin and Kevin Harvick were sort of stealing the headlines. They were quickly separating themselves as the drivers to beat. That set up what would soon become this back and forth between these two drivers. Winner of the Brickyard 400. Felt like if Kevin Harvick was winning a week, uh, then the next week, Danny Hamlin was probably going to win. This race team is such a dream. And who can outrun who? And that's what I see with Denny Hamlin and Kevin Harvick. Checkered flag in the air. Awesome job, two days in a row. You kind of look across the track and you know that that guy is making the other guy better every single weekend. Denny Hamlin wins. Hell yeah, the eight. Nothing pushes you more than when the other guy does something great. Watching them trade blows through the summer, it was awesome. The playoffs are what every team strives for. You can get in with consistency, finishing the 26 race regular season among the top 16 in points, but that's a risky way to qualify. The clear way to guarantee a playoff bid, win a race. Rookie Cole Custer locked up his spot at Kentucky. Hell yeah! Let's go! Throughout the summer, a few other drivers were able to break through the Harvick Hamlin stranglehold, earning checkered flags and playoff spots. Hell yeah! You're the man, Chase Elliott. For the first time ever, the regular season finale is set to take place at Daytona, a volatile venue that could jeopardize playoff chances for some and offer opportunity to others. NASCAR wanted to have a regular season finale in which drama was inherent. A guy who's 30th in points can win that race, and he could get himself a playoff berth. It creates an intensity that was really unmatched. This is obviously a shot for the playoffs. Can you be more aggressive? Do you take more risks Saturday night? With it being the final race of the, the regular season, yeah, it's kind of a little more dramatic. It's super nerve wracking. And then if somebody like ourselves or, or somebody outside of the playoffs, you know, get a win, uh, I think that's kind of the thing that, you know, is exciting. It's going to be crazy all the way down to the finish. It's gonna keep everybody on the edge of their seat. Coming back to Daytona, everybody's making a lot of hype of, uh, you know, this is the last regular season race. In the position that we're in, we're not in the playoffs right now, which is uh, not exactly where we wanted to be. The only way for Ricky Stenhouse Jr. to make the postseason is to win at Daytona. But while he's short on points, he's got confidence to spare. Anytime I go to Daytona, I always have that little bit of extra confidence knowing that we've been in victory lane. You go in there and you're like, man, I, I can do this again. So is it a big race? Yes. It's, it's nerve wracking for sure. This is Stenhouse's first year with JTG Doherty Racing. The team hopes his swagger and race winning experience will boost their program to new heights. We're a mid-level program. We are 120 people, okay? We're racing against teams like Penske and Hendrick and those guys. There's 600 people. So it's, it's truly David versus Goliath. But just like this year at the Daytona 500, we sat on the pole. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., he's won the pole for the Daytona 500. That's our biggest race. We, we out-qualified those guys. Ricky was a great fit because we wanted to be a little more aggressive and really push our equipment and try to put ourselves in position to maybe win races. He is so fearless behind the wheel of a race car, and he has always had such a great feel for what that race car does, and that's his, that's his dirt track experience. I grew up just south of Memphis, across the state line of Mississippi. Uh, my dad raced. I was born uh, at like noon on a Saturday. My dad raced that night. I went to the racetrack. My mom took me, I was six weeks old the first time and, and I've really been going to the racetrack ever since then. And I don't know if it's in my genes. My dad was a gasser. He ran the car really hard and was always exciting to watch. And, and I feel like 
whether it be a bicycle or a, a dirt bike, go-karts, sprint cars, I was always wide open, uh, go as fast as I could and, uh, and, and see what would happen. So uh, I guess that's where I kind of got my aggressiveness and, and excitement from. But you get a lot of hate from fans. Um, you get a lot of hate from sometimes other drivers uh, if you get into them. You know, it's something as a driver you never want to do, but at the same time, you got to block that out. For me, it's making sure that I'm in the best shape possible come race time. The more I prepare on the front end, uh, the better I feel after the race, and therefore I feel like I perform better uh, in the race car. NASCAR 2020 Under Pressure, streaming now only on Motor Trend.